Hey all, it's Rafi. And today I'm playing a game Starts with that started with e4, c6, d4, d5. And we have the exchange variation of the Kero Khan. And my opponent make, plays a quite a, uh, a quiet move, which was knight f3, to which I might just right away play bishop to g4. And the idea would be to play the bishop out before I play the move e6. Okay, so this check happens. Um... Let's see six. Is there now ninety five? I wonder. No, because ninety five I can take the queen. And um yeah, anyway, it didn't work. There's queen b six at the end of the knight e five line and I'm able to save my queen. So now we continue to get our pieces out. Maybe he'll play c4 soon. If h3 ever comes on the board right away, I'll take the bishop, I mean the knight on f3. I'm totally fine and happy giving up this light square bishop for the knight on f3. Because I'm playing kind of like a light square strategy where I am focused on putting all of my pawns on the light squares. And now I will take this. Then... Bishop d6 or bishop e7? That's the question. Bishop e7, there's bishop g5. Considering that, I think I'll play the bishop to e7. Maybe now he'll play bishop f4. I'm not a big fan of his move knight c3, by the way. I think the pawn should have been on c4. The c-pawn should have really been pushed to c4 to really fight for the center. The knight on c3 looks kind of awkward with the pawn behind it. Usually, people play c4 first and then put the knight there. But, um, yeah. It's not a, you know, a blunder by any means, but it's kind of, I think, a slight inaccuracy, possibly. So he takes the bishop back to f1 for some reason. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so if queen b6, knight a4. I think I'll just play rook to c8. That's an active developing move. So why not? Play that. Maybe I'll play a6 and b5 at some point. I think now is a good time to play queen to b6. Well, I don't know. He wants to play c4, I think. So maybe we can just stop this idea. 
You can't play C4 right away though. Things that I need to do is find a good square for my queen, bring the rook to d8. Those are the two main things that I, I need to accomplish right now. Maybe with that in mind, maybe I play queen b6 followed by rook d8. And maybe I can play for... Then what would I do though? I still would need to push my queenside pawns. So... Maybe I play b b5 first, then queen b6, then rook d8, and then play a5. Let's go with that plan. I like that. Because these queenside pawns really need to roll, so... You know, not having... Um, Having the queen blocking the two pawns doesn't really help me a whole lot. So now I have everything rolling on the queen side. And I'm ready for a b4 break. So if I play b4 right away, he takes, I take, he takes, I take. So if I play queen b6, he'll play b4 himself. That does make c3 kind of a weakness. So I'm fine with that. I can play this move and then play rook to d8. So where is this knight going is the question we have to ask. I think playing yeah before right away is probably should be the way to go here. So now there's rook a6, I think. He might play that. His bishop on f1 is now proving to be kind of useful actually on that square. So now I think we should just take it because if bishop takes, we have two double uh, two pawns to work with, and if yeah, so if b takes, now we have the uh, the c four square to go after. So I'm thinking now knight a five. If rook d to b one, then queen c seven perhaps. So we can drop the queen back here and then put the knight on c4. Knight will be beautifully placed on c4 and will, you know, give a, a lot of. Will prove to be. Of good usage. On c4. Because it'll pressure that bishop on uh, d2 also. So we need to make sure there's no kind of tricky stuff with the bishop. Now on that diagonal, I don't think there is. So let's go ahead and put knight here. Okay, so he went back with the bishop. So... Maybe now is a good time to play this move. 
Basically, I want to go ahead and challenge the two rooks on the two open files right away. So I could play rook b, I mean knight b2 here, but I'm not sure if what that really accomplishes for me, that's the thing. Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> you can go ahead and take one of these rooks. Right here, I'm sure he'll probably take on uh, f6 now, I would imagine. So the idea of this move, of course, is to play the knight to e4. We have two good squares to use to our advantage, c4 and e4, both are weak squares. That can be used for our, by our knights. And then we can also start playing something like rook c8 and keep pressuring c3 pawn so that e1 bishop stays inactive most of this game. Right now his main active pieces are the queen, maybe, the knight on h5, and then the bishop on d3. The rook is pretty active too, but it's not really attacking anything right at the moment. The bishop on e1 is his least active piece. So it's possible he'll play moves like queen e2 and pawn to e4 or, or sorry f3 or something like that. To maybe try to um, take control over uh, e4. Or he can do that too. So now there's always, you know, queen h5 type of stuff which will uh, attack. attack h7, but I think there's g6 to try to stop any kind of mating attack on, on h7. I do need to be careful though. I do have to be very, very careful. He offers me a draw. Um, I have to think about the offer for a second. Um, he does have the bishop pair. So it not, it's not going to be too easy to win this, huh? Yeah, I'll take a draw in this position. I'll take the draw because... Um, well, I mean, I just don't see, like, I have any serious advantage, honestly. And, I mean, I could have kept playing, of course, but I think white has sufficient defenses to really do anything here. And, I mean, I wasn't losing or worse or anything like that, but anyway. The guy offered a draw. Dead even position. Why not? Okay, so um, let's look at it. So t4, c6 which is a Karo Khan defense. One of the most solid chess openings of all time. D5. He takes. He takes. So knight here. Right away I play the bishop to G4. 
The reason I did that is because I don't want to, him to play the move h3. So for example, with knight here, say he plays h3. I guess I could play bishop f5 here too, but see if I play bishop f5, now he might just play maybe like c4, possibly, and start playing something like queen b3 and hitting d5 pawn and b7 pawn and things like that. But computer is recommending knight c6 after bishop b3, g6. So then you're going into line where you're gonna eat the the black, the light square bishop will come out to f5. I don't know. I personally like my line better than this. Let's see if there's a refutation or something like that, though. So h3 is recommended right away. Takes. Takes. Light c6. c3. e6. Bishop d3. Bishop d6. Castle. And the knight g to e7 is interesting. I would have just played knight f6. Seems more logical to me. Hmm. Very interesting stuff. Curious to see if there was any mistakes. Oh, forgot to run the computer analysis. So let's run that analysis and see what we could have done better in this position. So one inaccuracy from me, no blunder, no mistake. My opponent played Perfect game. No inaccuracy, no blunder, no mistake. That's good to see that. It's always good to see that kind of game. So knight f6 is what I played. Knight c3. I personally consider that kind of an inaccuracy. I'm not sure if the computer really thinks that or not, but I feel like when you're playing a move like knight c3, it really hampers your ability to um, control and strike at the center a lot of times in these kind of queen pawn openings. Typically the c4 pawn comes out first and the knight is developed behind the c3 pawn. But in this case, I think it was totally fine. There's no nothing wrong with it. It's just in many cases, it could be a little, um, little, what's the word I'm looking for? It could be a little awkward to put the knight in front of that c pawn. Here, I think it's totally fine. All right, so. Let's see what could have happened from here or what did happen from here. So knight c3 came on the board. e6. h3. He traded. Bishop e7. Yeah, bishop e7 versus d6. I think with bishop b6, there's always bishop to g5, which could be annoying. 3-7 is the correct placement. Rook d1. Castle. He plays bishop to f1. I thought that move was a little strange. Um, so here we go out of book also. Uh, theory as well. I don't know. I just feel like it was kind of an unprovoked move. Like I didn't play a6 or anything like that. He just chose to draw the bishop back for some reason. But let's see what the engine says. Wow. Engine says bishop f1 is actually the second or even first choice. Hmm. Interesting. I 
I mean, it makes sense. The bishop is on a good diagonal. And bishop d3 would be a, I guess, maybe a better diagonal, but that blocks the rook from being able to protect the d4 pawn. So it makes sense that he drew back to f1. So now rook c8, putting the rook on a half-open file and developing. Okay, so now he wants to reroute the knight. So this is where I played d5 right away because I realized like to finish development, I need to get my queen out to some square and I need to get my rooks connected. But um, but yeah, the, the, the problem is that, you know, if I put my queen on b6, then I can't really roll these queenside pawns forward. So that's why I wanted to push the pawns first and then put the queen behind it. So I start with b5, c3, and then, excuse me, a5, a3, and yeah, computer suggests b4 right away, which makes a lot of sense. I play queen b6 first. g3 and no reason to hold off on the move b4 i played it takes this bishop here and i went ahead and traded here d takes now i played knight a5 trying to get into c4 the queen back bishop came back and now knight went to c3 bishop went back to e1 then rook b8 challenging the rook on the open file knight h5 trying to trade off the light which is one of the primary defenders of the king side and maybe launching an attack on the king side so i traded a pair of pieces and brought this knight back more trades happened. Bishop d2, and that's when he offered me the draw. And I just could not see any sort of advantage really for black here at all. White was doing just fine with the two bishops. C3 is a weakness for sure, but it's just very difficult to even attack C3. Like I could put my rook on C8, but then I mean, then what? You know, it's not that easy at all. And with the two bishop pair, I mean, he should be just fine defending any kind of pawn weakness like that that he has. Um, and I just didn't see what to play for, really. I mean, like, what kind of pawn, um, you know, what, what, besides c3, like, what would I do? What would be my plan? Like, I couldn't really push my kingside pawns without any kind of serious threat to my king safety. And I have no other really attacks, points of attack, really, in the position, with the exception of c3, which is well defended. So, for those re reasons... I, I could not find any reason to continue the playing game, so I accepted the draw. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as well. I want you to um, go ahead and subscribe and like the video, share it, comment on it, and let me know what are your thoughts on the <coughs> this idea of playing quick a quick bishop g4 and taking the knight on f3 in the exchange Karakhan. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Have a great rest of your day or night, wherever you are.